Hi, welcome to the winter 2015 overview of MBA 515, Managing in a Global Economy. So I have, here's our menu path for Blackboard. And this course is going to be conducted through Blackboard. And I have Getting Started as our first tab. In the Getting Started tab, um, I would suggest that you go to course documents to find the syllabus, class notes, and lectures. Watch the video syllabus, which you're doing right now. I'll put the link here when I'm done. Uh, go to the assignments tab to view the assignments for the course. There are two types of assignments. There are quizzes and there are mini co ca closing cases to some of the chapters as well as a discussion board area. So those are the basic assignments for the course. I've divided the course up into three weeks. Each week is four classes. Now if you were to take this course in person during a winter session, you'd be coming to campus four days a week for four hours each day, probably a five hour commitment if you factor in commuting and walking to class. So that would be about a 20 hour a week in-person commitment if you were taking this in a in-person winter class. But you're, since you're taking this in an asynchronous online course, figure it's still about 20 hours a week worth of your involvement. You just don't have to go to a physical class, but you will probably be spending about 20 hours a week reading chapters, watching video lectures, and taking mini quizzes and, and answering case study questions. For week one, we're going to cover chapters one, two, three, and four. Each chapter comes with its own video link. And these video links you should cut and paste and open into its own browser page uh, because don't these links are dead within uh, Blackboard, so you can't click on them. But you can cut and paste them into... I did that on purpose because if you open a link within Blackboard, the Blackboard program it conflicts with uh, YouTube, the platform I, I have the videos posted on. It doesn't always work well. So this way, uh, there won't be no, any problems with that. And for each class, I will have, for each week, I'll have generally three discussion questions per week. And we'll get to those in a little bit. So for week one, we have the four chapters, we have the four lectures, and we have three discussion questions. That's what's going to be involved in week one. Assignments are also assigned for week one, but we're going to get to the assignments tab in a minute. Then I have week two, which, we're going to, which we also have four classes for week two. We go over chapter five, six, seven, and eight. Uh, merely a coincidence that chapters match the class, uh, class numbers. Uh, and again, we have video lectures for each chapter and three discussion questions uh, for the week. Actually, four for the week. But six and seven are together in one question. And in the final week, week three, we have class nine, 10, 11, and 12. And we go over chapters nine, 10, 12 and 13. I'm skipping chapter 11. And each chapter has its own uh, video lecture, of course, and uh, discussion questions for that week. So here is the basic layout and format and topics covered for this course and the this Getting Started tab. Now, announcements is where I put interesting information for you that relates to the progress of the course and things that are happening. So you want to check announcements. I also email every announcement, so make sure you're, you're checking your email associated with your Blackboard account, which is generally your stonybrook.edu email address that each student is assigned. Now, I had sent out this email earlier. The, the textbook for the course is one textbook for the course, and it's uh, uh, Charles Hill Global Business Today uh, Edition 8. Now, there's also a um, link here if you want to buy a digital copy of the textbook, you could get it for as cheap as $62 if the 60-day, um, it it's only going to work for 60 days and I guess it expires, but you can get a 60-day uh, textbook for as little as $62. You can also buy this textbook from the bookstore or online if you wish. Okay, so there's many different, multiple options for acquiring the textbook. And that's nice if they have a digital format because for some people on a budget, it makes it a little bit more affordable. Uh, okay, so the class overview. This is, again, sort of just a rehash of the Getting Started page. But this is, again, the syllabus. And with it's part of the syllabus, but I broke it out especially for the announcements page, just if you want a quick reference of what we're doing this week uh, and what's due. I have some information on when you do a, a quiz in the class, You'll get your grade, but you won't immediately see what's wrong to prevent copying. And then after the quiz link has expired and closed, the quiz is done, you can go back in and view what you've gotten wrong on the quiz uh, once I set it to be able for you to view, uh, receive what questions you got right and wrong. So you will get uh, feedback as far as how you did in the quiz 
but only after the quiz has everybody's completed the quiz. Now, the case studies, I put a little rubric in here for you to understand how I grade uh, the case study. So I have a little explanation. The case study should be about 100 to 300 words. Uh, and now if you score lower than a four on the case study, I will leave you feedback on how to improve your score. You just check grades and next year the grade for the assignment will be a little bit of a box of feedback for me that I'll talk to you about how you did. Um, now here's the rubrics I use, the criteria. I use down here, there's five criteria I use as far as when I grade your overall casework. And so you should read this over to get a better idea of what I'm thinking and looking at when I'm grading your casework. And for cases, I do expect you to use proper citations, and I have citation styles and examples here that you can use to uh, get a better idea of how to properly citate your, use citations in your work. And I don't care what format you use, uh, although I would like you to use APA if you could, but I'll accept any proper uh, citation formats just as long as they're properly formatted. And then you could read, I suggest reading over this rubric before you write your first case to get an idea of what I'm looking for. Okay, so that's what's in um, announcements right now. So let's go to uh, course documents. In course documents, you'll find the syllabus to the course. And for the syllabus, I have, again, the textbook here. This is an asynchronous course, which means that I'll provide all the details and contents and then you can, you can access them anytime, day or night. So there's not one specific time that we're all meeting in person, online, or something like that. That would be synchronous. So since this is asynchronous, I do have due dates that you have, to, you have to complete the assignments by, but you can choose the time of day which works best for you, which is good for people in different time zones who may be in different states or countries. Um, this, you know, the overview of this class, this class will introduce you to the concept of managing an international corporation. It's, it's encouraged that students have a good knowledge of general business and to understand the difference between the problems associated with doing business and then doing business on a global scale. And for my learning objectives for the class, I want you to analyze the impact of international business, national economic development, explain economic, political, legal, financial environments, that, um, that may affect international business operations between different countries, discuss how culture and behavioral influences may affect business practices among different countries in the world, describe how uh, functions of national trade agreement and investments and treaties affect international business, and just discuss the environment, environmental differences and, um, that support or complicate marketing, export, import strategies, so you know the basics of international business. Uh, how we're going to accomplish these learning goals is that we are going to uh, look at these topics through case studies. We're going to be um, discussing, the, uh, reading and discussing the textbook, and I'm going to cover 11 chapters during this, you know, 15-class uh, day semester, if you think three weeks, five days a week. Uh, it's technically four days a week, but you know what I mean. And I'll have multiple um, quizzes that will help reinforce the reading and the concepts we learn in the class. So achieving these objectives, um, I want the students to participate in the class discussions that I'm going to show you in a minute, per read the textbooks and the, and the materials provided, and listen to the lectures that I've recorded for you. The, the success of this course really depends on how able you are to analyze global business situations related to the course context, of course, identifying current and potential problems related to companies' international operations, um, purpose and justify solutions that are realistic, effective, um, and efficient in a global business environment. So our class time will include uh, coverage of the material in the book, discussion of articles and current events, uh, the use of discussion boards, and lecture videos to simulate a class environment. So basically what we'd be doing if we were meeting in a physical classroom is I would be preparing a lecture, going over a chapter, asking the class questions, and we'd be discussing them back and forth. Now the how I work office hours in the class is I use SB Connect. And office hours are by appointment, so you have an issue or something you want to discuss with me privately, we can schedule um, this SB Connect tool, which works sort of like an online meeting, and we can talk and share files and chat and even video conference if we want, if there's an issue here. Now, I just want to let everybody know, I will not accept any late assignments. Just 
just a heads up as we're going into the grading area. So the closing cases, there will be 24 points in closing cases, 26 points for the online discussion board. So right there, there are 50 points. And then another 50 points in the five quizzes. So there's no final exam for the class, just five quizzes you take um, during the course of, of the class in these mini quizzes, these mini cases and discussion boards, and that makes your 100 points of the class. So a very straightforward format. Here's how the, you, everything you do earns you points in the class, and this is how they translate into a letter grade. Most students in the class do well. Um, I'd say 50% or greater of the class gets an A. And the people who don't do well are the people who are missing assignments or don't have the time to put into the class. You know, for example, you're working two jobs and taking care of a family and you decide to take a three-week winter course. Usually doesn't work out well. Uh, preparation and participation. I give a, a high priority for, to the discussion boards in this class, and I want uh, you know quality of the discussion boards, not simple answers like nice post or thanks for sharing. You know, I'm going to expect a little bit more, and I'm going to go over that in detail in a minute. Uh, please note that participation doesn't mean dominating the class discussion. It's a give and take. So it means coming prepared and actually contributing uh, to a strong learning environment in the classroom. And the discussion board sessions, I'm going to go over uh, in a minute, I'll, I'll show you them personally, but I'll post three discussion, uh, three class discussions using the Blackboard discussion board menu button, and I'll post the questions or topics. Each student is expected to participate and prepare and produce an original response as well as um, two replies to two other students' articles uh, per week. So, and I'd expect you to be able to connect to and participate in the discussion board at least three times a week. Now, if we're looking at the Blackboard, um, we, you'll see there's an Assignments tab. In the Assignments tab, I will put the quiz links, I'll put the mini cases, so you get an idea and the due date. So I'll have everything set up in advance so you can see all the due dates. So if there's a day or two that you can't participate because you have a work event or you're traveling, you can do these, this work in advance and post it early so that way um, you won't miss any assignments. So I have everything posted in advance. And again, as we talked about before, here's our class schedule for the course. There are no makeup policies for any of the quizzes or assignments. And I expect every student to be at, you have some academic integrity and not cheat or plagiarize or copy or any um, you know bad stuff that you know any academic academic dishonesty I won't stand for in, in the graduate course uh, and again here is a rubric of how I'm going to grade each of your cases this is all post also posted in announcements it's very important to read this over before you prepare a case for me because I'm expecting that your casework be at a graduate level not you know, not the type of work I'm used to seeing for an undergraduate, but something that's professionally written and cited and, you know, um, answers the question with some context of the material and some original thought. Okay, so that's the syllabus. So you should take some time to read that over as well. I just went over it quickly here. Uh, let's go back to course documents. Now, I also have all the PowerPoints uh, here in course documents for all the chapters of the book. So you may be interested in the chapter I'm not going over, but I have the PowerPoints here as well, as well as the PowerPoints of the, of the chapters I'm going to cover in my lecture. So they're all backed up here under course documents. Okay, so let's go to assignments. Here in assignments, the first assignment is discussion board. This is, you don't have to submit anything here. This is just discussing the discussion board and what I expect. So I'm going to set up multiple discussion boards. And I expect every student to post one original response to the question and two replies to other students. Each post should be about 100, 200 words. And you earn points for participation in the quality of your answers and replies. And I expect you to um, participate at least three days a week. And that could be um, here, I, you know, it's a four week class, four day a week class, but you know, any, any three days between, uh, I guess, Monday through Friday would be acceptable. Um, I would like you to make your original post on Monday or Tuesday and your replies Wednesday or Thursday, even Friday would be, I guess, acceptable. Okay, so let's just go to this, pop over to the discussion board real quick just to show you what I'm talking about. Okay, so here, my first uh, discussion board is, first forum is class questions. So if you have any questions about the class, you can pop in here and already I have posted the question so we can uh, read this question and it says, hi, Professor Nugent. It 
uh, it looked as if there were 20 multiple choice questions on the quiz from the video syllabus. Is there a, is there a time limit for uh, when you begin the quiz to when you have to complete it? Thanks, Keith. So I would just reply back, there's no time limit. You can start the quiz, take as much time as you want, uh, and, and then submit it when you're ready. Okay, so then if you uh, wanted to ask a question in, you know, so if you go into class questions, you can actually create thread, just click on create thread, and then you can ask a question here, put your subject in your question here and click submit, and then that, that I will, me or another student can answer the question for you uh, about anything about the course that may. And the reason we do this because sometimes questions, multiple students may have the same question. So if you have a question, come here first, see if it's been already asked. If it's not been asked, create the, create the forum and then, or the thread, create the thread, and then me or another student will answer it depending on who gets to it faster. Okay, so for the discussion questions, I have discussion questions one through 10 set up uh, because one, this, this question is like two questions here this week. So I have the dates. So January 6th to the 10th, uh, you'll see is set up here. So that's the start date. And I uh, make your original post on Monday and Tuesday and your replies Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. And so I have the basic instructions here. So you click on discussion question one, and the question is actually right here. How does managing an international business differ from managing a domestic business? So you click on discussion question one, click on create thread, and then generally how I like you to create a thread is to put your last name first, and then maybe your first name. You can also add a small subject if you, if you wanted to here, say discussion question one, so, or, or, you know, as the basics of the subject. And then you can answer the question. And right here, you just type in um, a response. Let's see. Okay, just type in responses. And you have your, your, your set of tools up here. You have your spell check. You, have your, your, you can change the text color or the font size and cut and paste, add, add, add files, add video files, um, emoticons. I've never really done that before, but, uh, and uh, I guess these are symbol. I don't know what that is. Anchor name. I'm not sure. So you can make your response here and just hit submit. Okay. So that would be a sample of my discussion question one. And then when you go in to read it, you, you can actually, I would, I would, would like every student to rate the questions here. This is a poor response. So the overall rating would be zero to click on that. And then you can actually reply to this response and say, too short. All right. These are just not typical posts and responses, but this is just an example for you for the, this video syllabus. OK. So now you can see that um, there's two posts on this discussion board. And if another student wants, they would create another thread. And then they would say, And then you could this, so the second so what you would see is when you come into it, you may say two threads. There's two students here, and then so you can read their original posts or create a thread to create your original post. So anytime you create original post, you need to create a new thread. When you reply to another student's post, you just click on their post, read what they've written, and then click a simple reply. And that's pretty much how the discussion boards work. So. I have color coded them so week one is yellow, week two is green, and week three is blue. And they have clear start and end times uh, for when to complete each of the posts. So very simple and straightforward. You have your due dates. Just know each week you'll have three discussion boards. I would suggest working on one a day. Um, oh, actually, no, that wouldn't work. On Monday, Tuesday, make your, your answer all three of that week's discussion boards with the original post. And then Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, you can read other students' original posts and, and make a reply. Now, it's pretty straightforward. I, I don't think anybody would have a problem with this. But if you do, just click in class questions. Say, I, I'm not getting this discussion board thing. Can you please give me some additional instructions? And I'll be glad to give you additional instructions. But I think a lot of students are either done this before or familiar with discussion boards. So I'm not really reinventing a wheel here. OK. So that's it for the discussion board area. Pretty self-explanatory. And the discussion board questions are sort of inspiring, thinking type of questions and not always just um, 
a straight out answer from the textbook is really asking you to give me your experiences in the world of international business and provide me with some interesting ideas and concepts that the whole class can share so we have the ability to learn from each other and grow and really investigate the topics that we're learning in the class. Okay, so that's the discussion board. Let's go back to assignments. Remember, in assignments, this is just the assignment. You don't have to click or post anything here. You do everything on the discussion board tab or menu button. Okay, now let's get into the quizzes and case studies. In the textbook, that's why you have to buy the textbook, and version 8, we, there are many case studies at the end of various chapters. So I give you the page number of the, ch of, of the, uh, the chapter and the page number where the closing case is. You read the short closing case, and then the case will include questions in the, in the case. Click on this button. Uh, you write up, you attach your Word, or Power, uh, your Word or PDF file by clicking Browse the Computer, and you just attach your file, and then you've submitted the, the work. Okay, so this, the first one is due on January 8th, so before January 8th at 1130 p.m., you'll read the case study, you will answer the questions in the case study, and then click here to submit your file. You can even leave comments here if you had, if you have an issue or something you want to tell me, uh, but you don't, don't cut and paste your work here, just attach the file if you would, please. Um, so we have, and the case studies are very short, we're just talking like a few paragraphs and not very big case studies. So, you know, I'm, I'm not looking for, um, you know, five page responses here. I think you can easily respond to these case studies with one or maybe two pages of uh, written material. And when you, res when you um, create the responses to these case studies, it's not a big essay or a formal paper. You're just saying question one and you're giving me the reply to question one. However, if there is any, uh, if you're using any information, and I do suggest trying to gather some information outside the small case studies, please use proper citation. So if you, if you make a statement or express a fact, you need to have it cited uh, or where you got that information from. And again, if you go to uh, my announcements page or the, uh, or the syllabus, I will have the rubrics of what I'm looking for when you do a case study. So I'm looking for the paper to be well organized, uh, well put together. You can use visuals, I guess, you, um, good formatting. Uh, the research is outstanding as far as using information from either the, the chapter or other articles outside of the, um, the case study to, to point out or support some facts or opinions you have about the topics and the questions. I'm looking for you to proper, use proper citations. If you can, you can cite the textbook, if you're going to pull any information out of the textbook, or you can cite other books or magazine articles. Uh, but you use one of the, I suggest APA, but you can use any proper texting format that you're used to. Don't make up your own citation format and think it's proper. Don't just cut and paste a web link. That's not a citation format. You have to use the proper citation formats, and I include them here. Uh, so you can kind of look at, re refresh yourself on how to properly cite something. The, the writing that you write on these case studies are interesting, engaging, professionally written, grammatically correct. Uh, it flows, you know, you're, but again, you're not creating one big essay for me. You're just saying question one and then the answer, question two and then the answer, sort of structured like that. But within each answer, I want the questions to have a certain amount of professionalism. Okay. All right, so let's go back to assignments. And you know what I'll do after you make the first submission of the first case, I will take the time to give you a detailed feedback of any areas where I feel you can make improvements so that in the, the cases later on, you can incorporate that in and make sure you're getting the full point for each case. So case one is on Japan, case two is on Saudi Arabia, and then we have the first quiz, which is, I try to put these in date order, so the first quiz, you know, on Sunday, January 11th, you have a, paper, uh, a case study and a quiz due. So if you don't have a lot of time on Sunday, you may want to do one of these on Saturday or Friday beforehand. And that's why I'm putting all these assignments up all together at once so you can pace yourself as far as when you want to do each assignment. So if you're going somewhere for a day or two or you have a very busy schedule in a couple of days and you can't really work on any assignments, do them ahead of time and, and submit them early so that way you don't fall behind. And if, you know, I'm, I'm submitting this video, lec the video lecture in the, in the Blackboard course, I'm opening it early, so if you want to get, go ahead and start working on the class early and get a head start, feel free to do so. 
Okay, so this first quiz on chapter one and two is due on Sunday. So you click on the quiz and you click begin. And then at this point, it's just multiple choice questions. So you read the multiple choice questions and you, you select an answer for each of the questions. And they're all directly from the textbook. So it's nothing that you're going to have to investigate on the internet or really research. They're just uh, sort of a, 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 an assessment for me that you're reading and understanding the chapter. So I get an idea of what students are understanding. And there's a question a lot of students get wrong. They know I have to cover that better. I'll make a supplemental lecture. So, and as you go along, so you have, you know, unlimited time to complete the quiz, as much time as you need up until the due date, but you can only take the quiz once. So then you can save and submit, and then you'll get a, um, I don't get it because I'm the instructor, but you'll get a, uh, a point value for how many points you've earned once you completed the quiz. And then sometime after that, once everyone's completed the quiz, I'll open up the correct which questions you got right or wrong. And when you go into your grade book, you can click on the quiz and it'll open up and you can see which questions you got right or wrong if you're curious about that. But that comes after the due date. Okay, so then the class assignments pretty much unfold in a chronological order. You have the two case studies, then the quizzes are coming up, a couple other case studies here, more quizzes, and then your last case study and last quiz at the end of the course and it, it, it flows in that nature so you just and they're spaced out pretty appropriately during the three-week period so just again if you do have something coming up where you can't work on the class for that day make sure that if there's something due that day you do it a day before so all the assignments are laid out early and, and ahead of time to give you advance notice of what what's due and what's expected and you know it's, it's pretty much just a, a to-do list of things to accomplish for the class okay so that's assignments we have already went over to discussion boards and of course in tools here you can check uh, your grades under tools and there's here you can go to library resources if you need to use the library for any additional research or looking up any articles I think you know it's a really good resource to go into the library and you know search for articles related to you know some support for your for your particular article if, if need be or you know also google works very well too okay so that's the basics of the course so i wanted to create this quick video syllabus to give you an idea of what you're getting into however i've gotten a lot of positive feedback on this course from students it's laid out very logically um, it's very organized so that way you can quickly understand what you need to do each week how involved you need to get each week, what the assignments are, and how, the, how I utilize the menu buttons for getting started and continuing with the course. And again, after you view this video syllabus, the Blackboard site will be made available as well. And you can go to the Blackboard site and kind of look around, even start some of the assignments early. I encourage you to, to get the book as early as possible. Uh, and if there's any questions you have, just go to the discussion board and click on this class questions and create a form, create a new question for me. And you can go ahead and ask me some questions about the course or any issues you have during the course. Now, of course, during like the Christmas holiday, I may not be as responsive, but I will be very responsive once the class starts. But we'll be peeking in once in a while um, before, up until the class starts in case anybody's left some questions in here. And if it's something that's very urgent, you can always email me directly. Or if it's a, a private matter, please don't post it on the class questions form. Email that to me directly because I respect your privacy. So if you feel something you don't want other students to know about, you can email me, always email me directly. Okay, so that's, that's it for the video syllabus. I'm going to go ahead and uh, process this and post this and email it out to everybody. So good luck with the course. I think you'll have a great time. It's um, generally, I think it's a, it's a pretty informative, pretty well-structured course that is appropriate amount of work for a winter semester. I mean, this if I were to teach this course in a 15-week class, I there would be additional tests and case studies and uh, projects involved. But for the shorter winter session, it's been truncated to uh, cover what we can possibly cover within the time allotted of the winter session. Okay, so uh, thank you and I'll see you in class.